Alabama for the halfway point in the International Race of Champions. Hello and welcome, I'm Paul Page, and here at Talladega we come with a very close points fight now. Now, in the IROC, the key is scoring points. Points for winning the race, but points too, bonus points for leading the most laps, and that's the key of the strategy. Here is the way the points are lined up right now. Take a look at that. Any one of the 11 drivers here today can still go home with a championship. So the whole key to this race is get as many points just as fast as you can. 11 cars are lined up. Allinger Jr. is missing due to a shoulder injury. The cars are numbered according to their position in the points fight, and they start in reverse order of the points. On the pole, road racer Steve Millen, the lime car. Alongside another road racer, Hurley Haywood, the powder blue car. Looking back in row number two, two NASCAR veterans, Rusty Wallace in the medium blue car and Ricky Rudd in the yellow car. In row number three, the great sprint car racer from the world of outlaws, the Evans orange car of Steve Kinzer and road racer Tommy Kendall in the teal car. In the fourth row, two NASCAR veterans, Jeff Gordon, the dark blue car and Ken Schrader, the light blue car. In row number five, road racer Scott Pruitt, the car is pink and Dale Earnhardt, the grand champion of NASCAR in the tan car. Alone in the sixth row, NASCAR expert Mark Martin, the car is mustard. 101 miles, 38 laps lie ahead. Let's take a look as they work off the high bank here at some of the onboard cameras we have for you. Looking from the front bumper of Steve Kinzer's car. A little further back, Kenny Schrader has onboard cameras. And all the way toward the back, Dale Earnhardt, his onboard camera on top of the car. We'll keep an eye on this because traditionally he moves very quickly through the starting field here. Now as the safety car comes off, another reminder, the start finish line here is down well beyond the tri-oval right at the pit exit. And that means at the finish you can take a run for that start finish line with a non-traditional line. See Dale Earnhardt laying back trying to get a run on these fellows. Green is out. Green flag flies, Steve Millen moves to the lead, but keep an eye on Earnhardt. He moves high in turn one. Kenny Schrader trying to go by on the outside. He and Earnhardt hooked up. Schrader, Earnhardt, Martin now hooked up, running the high groove. Scott Pruitt comes forward a few positions and tucks in. It's still Millen in the front. Rusty Wallace comes to the inside on the backstretch. Three abreast throughout much of the field. And Wallace gets some help from Kinzer. And Wallace moves to the front. Here's Earnhardt's view as he starts to move up through this field. Boy, there you get a great view of the banking here at Talladega. And Earnhardt losing positions up on the outside. They're three abreast right in front of them. Almost touched. Pruitt and Schrader right side by side there as they're three abreast all the way through the first turn. And Rusty Wallace will lead that lap. Pruitt is that sandwich there. He's in the pink car between the two bluish cars. Rusty Wallace hooking up with Steve Kenzer. Out in front, Ricky Rudd, that yellow car in third place. Look at him, three abreast once again, sandwiching Scott Pruitt. And there goes Mark Martin. He's going to try to make it four abreast. No, he backs off, wisely backs off. And Earnhardt now tucked in ahead of Pruitt and now starts his move for the front. Martin leading the championship, but as you can see, he's in that mustard-colored car, is now last in this race, so he's really got his work cut out for him. The key here again, scoring those bonus points. Wallace in front, trying to pick up as many laps in the lead as he can, if not the overall win. Kinzer running really well again. Last year, if this race feels fast to you as you're watching it, last year he won at an average speed of 186 miles an hour. This is the view of what that speed looks like from Steve Kinzer's car. The nine car of Rusty Wallace just ahead. Down the back stretch. There's Ricky Rudd as he closes on Wallace and around Kinzer. Kinzer losing spots. Also Schrader, Schrader closing in. And he's Gordon in down to the inside. Wow. That's what happens when you don't have a draft. And we see a challenge for the lead on the outside. Here comes Ricky Rudd as he tries to move to the lead of this race. Does so right at the line, and they spread five wide. Whoa. Look Whoa. at Earnhardt. Earnhardt comes down on the inside of Rudd. That's straighter up on the outside. 
Earnhardt squeezed out of the throttle just a tick. Earnhardt trying to work down in that low groove. Will it work for him? Earnhardt gets a little help. But it's not but good Pruitt enough. But is moving into third place and picking up on that three-car draft. Pruitt's having a sensational IndyCar season, and you sense that he comes into this race very much a potential winner, certainly in his mental attitude. He's hot. And Earnhardt has moved back up in line because he was getting past losing all kinds of real estate. Well, Penny, you said it would take Dale two laps to get to the front, and you were dead right. Now it's a question of what he does with it. Well, the front, in this case, is fifth place, which is really about halfway through the field. Well, I Normally, mean, we see Earnhardt about this point heading right up to the front. Right, but I mean, I think he has the potential to take the lead if he chooses to. Not any question looking back from Kenny Schrader's car. As the field battling it out, there is Scott Pruitt. Tommy Kendall trying to take the lead. He's on the inside and will take the lead. The road racer who says he's very comfortable here finally said that he was finally being able to look down, read the gauges. But unfortunately, he's on the inside hunk and the train will be going by on the outside unless he can get some help from Mark Martin. You better climb up into that fast train on the high side. Again, the view from Earnhardt. Sitting here watching them go by, they just thunder by as a group. There's no closer racing anywhere in the world than IROC. So the first lap's already complete in the international race of champions, and the battle to lead this race is a walloper. ESP. 13 laps complete as Jeff Gordon moves to the inside of Dale Earnhardt here at Talladega in the International Race of Champions. And Gordon moves to the front. Seems like everybody wants to get up here and give it a shot. And here comes Ricky Rudd. And you see the contact between Rudd and Earnhardt as they came off the corner. We saw that blue smoke. That's when the tires rub sheet metal. Wow. Keep an eye on Ricky Rudd now. He drops back a little bit. Perhaps a little uncertain about the car after that, but he's right back into the throttle. Closing behind Pruitt. Benny, back in the mid-70s, you raced in IROC and won your fourth ever IROC race. Was the pace this intense, or this is incredible stuff? <laughs> it is, no, it wasn't. I don't think it was this intense because we have 11 drivers, all nose to tail. Any of them can still win this race. I think it had narrowed it down to two or three cars back in the 70s when I won the IROC race. Right. This is great stuff. I mean, here we are well into this race. They are still running as a group. All of the cars, all 11, are running right together. And we've got some cars on the inside trying to hook up and get to the front. There's three of them. And notice that Pruitt has bounced his way back into third place. So he is a guy that he made a mistake, or anyway, he made a move that didn't pay off, but he's been able to work his way back up. It's still Jeff Gordon followed by Earnhardt and Pruitt. Ricky Rudd's dropped well back through the field. We've had six lean changes among the 11 drivers in just 15 laps. Earnhardt well placed to take over the lead in the championship. Here he's going for the lead. Scott Pruitt decides to follow Earnhardt, and they will take the lead away from Jeff Gordon, put him back to third place. Now, Jeff wisely moves down. He said, I want to follow these cars. Well, there's not much, Benny, is there, uh, the leader can do when the second place man pulls out, timing it well, and takes the third place guy with it. There's nothing he can do except sit there or block him. Still, here's the most amazing thing. They are all still together. Earnhardt and Pruitt pull out just a little bit, but all 11 are still right together on the course. A little more help oh. from Pruitt. All right. Into the jaws. Wow. What happens, Benny, if you do throw a block? For one thing, you scrub a little speed, right? You lose a little speed, so the whole pack catches you a bit. Exactly. That's, yeah. Anytime you move on the racetrack, you do scrub a little speed. Benny, how much has that felt up in Earnhardt's car? Oh, it's felt. And there it is again. Wow. Another something to feel. I think he's touching it. Yep. But he backs off, wisely backs off to let Earnhardt get in the corner because you just can't drive in the corner with someone pushing on that back end. It will make the car spin out. Earnhardt, Pruitt, Gordon, the top three. Wallace and Schrader are sitting back fourth and fifth. Hi, I'm Scott Pruitt. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, get Ooh. out of my way. <laughs> There he is again. You bet it. He's definitely hitting him. Oh, 
It's like a fighter plane refueling in midair or something, isn't it? Looking for the nozzle. And wow. Benny, how does Earnhardt going to react to this? Well, Earnhardt has done that all the years that he's been racing, and I think that he expects Scott Pruitt or Jeff Gordon or any of the rest of these cars to do it. So not only expects it, but enjoys it? I don't know that he enjoys it. I don't yeah. think anybody enjoys getting hit at 190, <laughs> 95 miles an hour. <laughs> the only driver with a road racing background in the top six right now is Scott Pruitt. And there we see those eight cars have broken away from the final three. Finally, we have three cars broken away from this lead draft. Oh, look at that. That's exciting stuff. Look at Jeff Gordon jump out of line just a little bit in that dark blue car. And Rudd, the yellow car on the inside, still trying to get back to the front. The banks here at Talladega are the steepest of any track anywhere in the world. And the banking is very hard to learn, but road racer Scott Pruitt seems to have mastered the technique. Now in the overall standings, he is breaking up what is otherwise a top five that belongs exclusively to NASCAR drivers. So the run continues at Talladega. We'll be back. Right together, all 11 cars that started are just like one connected train coming off a of turn two and down the backstretch. Led by Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt sits in second place. And as he moves out to try and take the lead, Scott Pruitt is that pink car, but he elects to stay with Gordon. Now Earnhardt's all alone, <laughs> not for long, <laughs> slides right up to the front. Earnhardt just got by Gordon and drove to the top because he looked in the mirror and there's no one with him. If he'd stayed down there, he would have ended up about 10th place before he could have gotten back in line. He said, that's not for me. And watch, this is out of Earnhardt's car, the back of Earnhardt's car as he watches Jeff Gordon. That was a beautiful move by Earnhardt. It's tough to pull that off. He, he knew he had just enough momentum and he used the banking of the track to help him just a little bit and made his mind up really quickly to pull back in before it was too late. Nice move by Dale Earnhardt. Puts him back up front. You see him on the left of the screen. He's led most of the race. Yeah, but he's not getting any rest. If it's, if it's not Pruitt hitting him, then Jeff Gordon's going to come up and tap him. Look at them all right together there. It's never lonely at the top in I Rock <laughs> Racing. <laughs> Earnhardt, Gordon, Pruitt. You look back from Earnhardt. Martin is now fourth. He's suddenly become a factor here. Kendall is fifth. Rudd is sixth. They had a multi-car accident here in practice. Three cars were written off in a practice incident. And you know, you hate to think of that something like that happening in the race, but with them as closely bunched as this, you can imagine the consequence if anything goes wrong here. Boy, after saying that, I do not want to be you if they touch, Sam. No. Chase Ignore, the head of the I Rock is going to have you big time. That's Kenny Schrader on the inside trying to get back to the front. He had fallen back to about ninth or tenth in line. He's trying, but no one. Oh, oh, and he and Rudd, Rudd takes a hit. Did they get together? Yes, they like did. Oh, yeah. But it was like Rudd moved over on Trader, kind of gratuitously, like, hey, here I am. Kinzer and Millen down low. Boy, and they just keep swapping positions all up and down the 11, but there they all are. Earnhardt on point. Trader. Near the back now, but trying to do something about it, moving around on the road. Boy, is this a great race. Earnhardt, Gordon, Pruitt. And they're all trying to figure out, what can I do to beat the guy in front of me? All the championship contenders are now well-placed in the top four or five. Laps are reeling off. 28 into the record book. And no cautions to this point. And yet all of them are stuck right together. Here we see Kinzer and Millen down on the inside trying to go to the front. There's so many cars lined up nose to tail on the high side. It's doubtful they can make it to the front. Around here you start thinking about your end game strategy. What exactly am I going to do on that last lap? And of course in a situation like this where the cars are so evenly matched, there's so many variables. Earnhardt, Gordon, Pruitt, Mark Martin now in the fight as round three continues. Back at Talladega, the international race of champions, the front of the order remains the same. Earnhardt, Gordon, Pruitt, and Martin. If the race ended right now, then Earnhardt would seize the championship lead from Pruitt 
and Mark Martin would slip from first to third. That's if it finished right now, and it isn't going to. There's a lot of racing left. A lot of guys thinking about what they're going to be doing at the white flag in just a few laps. Looked like that Jeff Gordon laid back a little bit that time to get a run on Earnhardt, but he could not make the pass wisely. Just pulled in behind. A warm day, bright sun, a lot of fans with their shirts off. What's that going to be doing to tires? Traction nice and hot. This racetrack, when it was first built in the late 60s and early 70s, they had all kinds of problems with tires here, but Goodyear developed a tire in the mid-70s. Since then, tires has not been a problem at Talladega. Still, all of them, all 11, right together. Jeff Gordon in the blue car made his first million dollars at the age of 19, a prodigy in racing. Won the Brickyard 400 last year. Many people believe this is the man of the future, the man who may take over Earnhardt's mantle. There he'd he like is. to start today, wouldn't he, Sam? Boy, wouldn't he ever. <laughs> well, they're running one, two right now. Pretty good. The king and the pretender, let's put it that way. Yeah. And for Gordon, the future just may be now. He's looking so strong and battling with Earnhardt. Pruitt from road racing still very definitely in this fight. In fact, the road racers, two of them in the top five, Pruitt and Kendall. Kendall runs in fifth behind Mark Martin. There's Scott Pruitt, third place. Nice steady run out of him. Pruitt's career was interrupted by a savage accident that he had in practice several years ago, had to be cut out of the car. It was a question whether he would ever race again. He has not only come back, he won the Trans Am Championship last year. He's ultra competitive. Here we go. A move Jeff for Gordon the lead. Tries that clean. surge. Gordon has decided now is the time to take the lead, and he does it. He does it exactly the way Earnhardt made that one car pass, isn't it, Benny? He same sure. place and same timing. But still, with eight laps to go, there's a long way to the finish. Is that the test, Benny, or is that the move? I don't know. I, I don't know what that was exactly. Ooh, almost some contact between Kenzer and Schrader. They've got Rudd, Schrader, and Kenzer. Really got Rudd trapped up against Ooh. the wall there for a moment. Kenzer's just chugging along, though, with Steve Millen met right behind him. There's Kenzer on the left of the screen in the orange car. And the road racer, Steve Millen, just outside of our screen, is right behind him. And outside line once again becomes the dominant line. Puts those fellows on the inside to the back. Benny, why would why wouldn't the shallow lower down line, which would be shorter, work better? Because it's, you have to drive up out of the corners and you just lose your momentum as you come from there, the middle of the corner, up off the corner, you lose momentum. If you ride around the top of the rim, you just simply do not lose any momentum. Got it. Gordon, Earnhardt, Pruitt. Martin, Kendall, and Rudd, right in that order. We'll be back for the checkered flag. All things are the same at Talladega. Jeff Gordon still has the lead. Earnhardt is still chasing, followed by Pruitt, Mark Martin, Tommy Kendall, Ricky Rudd, Kenny Schrader, Steve Kenzer, Hurley Halewood, and then Rusty Wallace. And the signal, five laps to go, five laps. It's all that's left. The guys in the back, they need to get together and try to get to the front, get on double line on the inside. What I'm wondering is, did Gordon make that move too early? Earnhardt has shown in this run that he can duck to the inside, pick up the first position, and tuck right back in. He's got it within the car. Ooh, here comes a run. Now, Gordon does make a block, doesn't he? He moves down a little bit to discourage Earnhardt. Not here, Dale. Now, Earnhardt has to go by when the other fellows doesn't think he's going by so that he doesn't take them with him. None of the maneuvers by the first and second place cars are wasted on Scott Pruitt. He's got to decide, and it probably will happen in a split second, who he goes with, what he's going to do about it. About three and a half laps to go now. Gordon still leads. Because in many ways, Benny, don't you think Pruitt is a, a good candidate for second place, certainly, in the race, depending on what he does with the two guys ahead of him. Pruitt probably is sitting in the best place because if Earnhardt does go, he can go with Earnhardt and then pass Earnhardt. So Scott Pruitt may be in the best spot of all, or Mark Martin. 
but Earnhardt's going to wait. This guy is a master at these big racetracks. He's going to wait, and when it's advantage Earnhardt, that's when he's going. If Pruitt is thinking points, he would rather go with Jeff Gordon and demote Earnhardt because Earnhardt is his closest rival in the point situation. I don't know if you think all that far ahead. Looks I like Earnhardt might be backing up for a run. He's backing up. Onto the backside, just trying to find room to get a little roll forward. Earnhardt, who has already clinched the five bonus points for leading the most laps here. And no. Boy, he backed up. Benny, and then he sucked right back up on top, didn't I he? I think that's what he was trying to do, was back up a little bit and see how fast he could suck up on Jeff Gordon's car, how long it took him, how much of the straightaway that it took to get there. Once again, he backed up a little bit. Maybe this is the move. No, I heard him back off the throttle. Yep. You're He's setting for one of those laps, last lap maneuvers. Two to go now. Both the leaders know that they can just dodge by the guy in front with that little move down tight. Assuming they don't get blocked now, of course, they may very well get blocked on the last lap. Pruitt's then got to decide which way he's going to go, which driver he's going to follow. This is the best performance by a road racer. We thought it might happen here, and it is happening. Pruitt's having a great day. We've been green all the way. About a lap and a half to go. Gordon's still in front. It's coming up to move time. Gordon moves everywhere, trying to make sure that he can protect against the attack of Earnhardt. Just ahead beyond the trioval, the white flag. Waits indicating the one more lap to go. Decision time for everybody. And look at them, they're all together. Hold your breath and look at that crowd. They are loving this race. Earnhardt looks to the inside and won. Now Earnhardt, is he going to back up, try to get a run? It looks like he is backing up just a tick to get a run, coming down the back straightaway. Mark Martin looks to the inside of Pruitt. Wants to see what oh, Earnhardt's doing. Martin Here comes to the inside of the block, and Earnhardt went on the outside. Now Pruitt to the inside, three of Not to follow. Pruitt, I thought, was going to stick with Gordon and follow him, but now he's bidding for the lead on his own. Pruitt oh, by himself Earn gets up very Eight. close to Earnhardt. Earnhardt close to the wall. The final corner. Gordon fast on the low line. And here on the inside is Jeff Gordon. There are four abreast coming down for the line, and it looks like... Who is it? Earnhardt surging ahead. And Earnhardt just may take it. Earnhardt now just barely nips it at the line. How can you say Unbelievable. That? Man, oh, man. An unbelievable gentleman, Steve Kinzer, you see in the orange car, right through Earnhardt's windshield there. Looks like he finished second. He did finish second. God. And I'll tell you what, another couple inches and he made one the thing. That is prodigious. What a performance for, from Steve Kinzer. Well, I just, you know, I got backed up there and I got a little run there coming out and going into three and four and found me a little hole. And I tell you, I thought I'd won the thing for a second. I mean, it was that close, but uh, I guess they got a little better view than I did there.